Welcome back to the channel. It's uh, the 28th of December and I'm here with uh, my good mate, the Fox. And we've decided to do a little overnighter up in the mountains above Sawyer. What's the weather forecast, Dave? Wind, lots and lots of wind. Lots of wind forecast. <laughs> what's, the, what's the wind chill on the top? Two degrees. Dave's worried we're going to be cold, so he's, I don't know what he's put in his bag, but I couldn't even get it off the ground. Look at him struggling away there. <laughs> <laughs> That's how heavy it is. He's forgot his tripod, so he's had to bring his other one. Anyway, just to get back on to more important things, we're actually decided we're going to do a little trip up to Tossal's Verds. Only today we're doing a new route. We're actually going up the back door. We found it on Wikiloc. There is another passage where you can get to the summit uh, via the, an eastern route, which I did see when I was up there once. There was a group of Spanish uh, day hikers up there and they went, uh, they went down the eastern approach so today we've got the uh, we've got the wiki lock on, and we're following uh, one's track up the back passage of Tossal's Verds. So let's see how we get on. <laughs> That's his entire collection of personal items in that backpack. You could leave home today and never go back. We're just walking down to the edge of the. Gorge Blau Reservoir here. See, we need to be across there. We do. But isn't this beautiful? It's quite breezy today. It's the first time I've ever been down to this uh, this shore side here. Is it? It is, Dave. Beautiful day. Look at that. So we're just walking along the uh, the, bed. the bed of the lake here. Obviously, where we are now has been underwater at some time. You can see the view behind me, and uh, we're going to hang a left up here somewhere and uh, head up through the forest. So we're just debating if we're on the right path there and uh, there was a sign that said Privado and I said to Dave, do you think we're all right? Dave's just told me the guy that did this wiki lock, he's in prison <laughs> for <laughs> trespassing. <laughs> I'm sure we're fine. Yeah. Yeah. No, I could have the other half. If you buy a wooden barrel and cut it in half... What, give you the other half? Give me the other half. He's always on the scrounge like. Well, this is nice. Look at this. We're on the track now, we've just come. I think we're, we're now on the same path that below, aren't we? On the same path as the aqueduct? Yeah, but lower down. I think it could be, yeah. Uh, yeah. So there's a lot more uphill on this. But, um, because we haven't driven. It's a very nice route this. I'll just pan round onto the aqueduct there's here. There's a look. There's a view looking down onto the Gorge Blau. Really nice. And we're just on this track here. There's the fox out with his camera again. What a fantastic view of the Pudge from this side. It was David just so. Oh, it's Larry the sheep. Look at this spot we just found, guys. I mean, you've got the view of the lake just over there, and this emerald green carpet. Fantastic camping spot. David, have you found another one? And this is completely off 
the normal GR221 trail. Now look at this. Imagine this, Dave. Me up here, you down there, vice versa. Because I won't want to be too close to you. Oh, it's a bit close, that like. <laughs> so we've just got to the bridge where the aqueduct is, and look, it's absolutely full. The aqueduct is full, Foxy. Tell you what we could do if our rock pool hasn't got any water in, we could just go in here tomorrow. You get washed down the river. You wouldn't. We're just saying, if we went in at this side tomorrow morning, you wouldn't get washed down because you'd hit the bridge. <laughs> What's it like, Dave? Pretty chilly. Let's have a little test. Oh, it's not that bad. I'd say it's a good 10 degrees. You're not allowed to go in there anyway, because that's the water for the rest of the You're not allowed to go in the rest of the No, no, no. So we're off now up our um, usual track. Then run down to town. So we're at the turn off now. I normally would be heading a right up to Tossals this way, but we're going to carry on and see if we can find out this other route off Wikiloc. Stay tuned. So we're just walking along now. This is actually the uh, font, not the font, the. Um, Torrent des Pratia and as we get down here there's a little place we're going to stop and have a little bit of lunch but I'm really happy the water's running for our swim later on and this is the little bridge you have to go over here I just love a river running through a forest I think there's nothing more beautiful than the water and the sound of it. Absolutely fantastic. It's so good to get out into the mountains over the Christmas holidays. So I've got the tea on the go there. As you'll probably see. Mine has boiled much quicker than David's who's using the decathlon stove. Sort of windmaster always wins the boiling competition. He was actually he was so afraid, he actually set his off before mine. <laughs> and we've brought some... Uh, I've got a bit of buffet food with me today, look. I've got a pork pie there. And... A mince pie. And a few bits of stuff that was left on the buffet for lunch there. Look. Look at that, man. Two sausage rolls, a couple of bits of sandwich. Wait, get any better than that, like. Where's my pork pie? Ah, I only had the one. Wait, you David, you can't be swearing on the YouTube. You call me a mate, and you'd be... Look at him. Bring me a bit of pork pie. Well, guys, we have now arrived at the little waterfall and the, uh, the pool where we uh, had our little dip last time and actually look you can see our feet marks in the pool David yeah. we've got David crossing over here he comes watch you don't slip and go hurtling downstream in the rapids look at him here he goes Hello. He's done a little there. Yeah. Not So we're at the waterfall. We've got Dave behind me there checking the temperature somewhere. There he is. And he says it's 11. <laughs> it feels cold on that to me. Anyway, here we go. I've changed my mind. Wim Hof, the Iceman! Dave. Oh no! No! Oh, 
And that view is, is how it's done. So we're absolutely knackered. I'm not, I'm fine. You're fine? Yeah, I keep slowing down for you. But... No, thanks. Are you, do you know where we're going? To the top. You're not, not this one, it's that <laughs> one over there. I think he had altitude sickness before, bless him. So this uh, backdoor route to Tossa is just completely, uh, generally unmarked, apart from these little piles of stones you see on the way up. And it's, uh, it's really no wonder people don't come this way a lot. It's really steep. It's obviously is used by probably some of the locals. Goats. Uh, but yeah, it's a much... Uh... Do you think it's a harder route than the other way, Dave? Yeah. Yeah, that's a yes from Dave. <sighs> Look at the view, viewers. Look at that. That's phenomenal. I think that's Inca down there, Dave. Yeah, probably. Got Inca in the distance there. Uh, and a duck flying by. Oh, well, we've got here, it's like a... It's like a solid... Solid mountain wall. Mountain face. As usual, a foxy has found the trail. So we just got to the uh, top of Tossals. That was a grueling backdoor ascent. Oh, oh! You can see the marker behind me there. David's wandering around with his minus 50 down jacket on here. He nearly got blew off the mountain. And um, you probably can't hear the wind, but it is blowing probably 40, 50 kilometers an hour up here, I would say, easily. So, I don't think there's any way the Foxy is gonna to get to set his land channel over there. It's not actually too bad in this rock ring, but outside, it is blowing really strong. Let's see what he's got to say. Foxy, did you bring an anchor? An anchor? Anchor the kite down. So we're just sitting here debating do we stick it out up here in the wind or we do, do we go back down the usual route and just find somewhere in the forest to spend the night? That is the question. I think we're going to head down. There's just no way the Landshard 1 would withstand this wind. The lunch and lunch, you know. I tell you, here I would put it off, no problem. Well, I would put mine here. Yeah, well, there you go then. <laughs> and this is my spot, so you can fuck off to your own spot. Thank you. Hang on, I took over this spot when I, when I got the two man's in. You really took over it. You've got no fucking rights on it. Hey, this, this is what I made. Here you go. The, I wouldn't have meant they have tossels. So the most ridiculous thing here is we are now walking down through the woods and went to the place where Foxy thought it was too close to the trail. So now, Dave, yeah. when you think about it, do you know what the most ridiculous thing is? We're going back to sleep where we started walking from before. Yeah. <laughs> In the pitch black. No. Well guys, we ended up walking back to literally where we got the water out of the Torrent Des Pratt. Um, so I ended up carrying two litres of water in a big circle all the way around to end up exactly back where we got the water from. So we've pitched up here. It's absolutely blowing a hoolie. Um, 
it was forecast for 60, 70 kilometre winds tonight. So we really did the right thing, not staying on the top. Uh, I think we would have been all right in that rock ring, but it would have been flapping and gusting all night long. It wouldn't have been comfortable. And I don't think uh, outside of the rock ring where Dave puts his lunch on would have been feasible at all. So we made the right decision to get down here. So we're all pitched up nice and cosy now. Dave's in his tent watching a bit of Netflix. I'm in my bag. And uh, we're just both knackered and having a bit of an early night. So we'll uh, catch up in the morning. Well, good morning. It's been a really windy night. There were times I had to shout over to Dave and ask if he was still there. He hadn't been blown away. <laughs> Dave. Dave? Yeah? Did you nearly blow away last night? Well, he did nearly blow away. He nearly blew away. It was gusting. Well, like... Ran sham. How many... It proved itself. Listen, how many um, kilometres do you reckon it was last night? Oh, uh, 60. Must have been 60 kilometre winds last night. Unbelievable. So, yeah. Dave's been up for a while. I'm just going to get up shortly and uh, get a brew on and see how the day pans out. I've been... Lovely and toast here in the uh, cumulus sleeping bag here in the um, the top tent double rainbow. Really nice. Lovely. Well, guys, the top tent double rainbow LI and the Lanshen wall held up very well last night. No Didn't they, David? No problem. How are you? Apart from the wind. <laughs> There was a bit of wind this morning, I heard. <laughs> well, there we go. I've got a brew on. Just going to get some breakfast on the go. It's actually not too cold when you get out with your down jacket on. Just going to see what we've got. This is the water out of the river that I took all the way around the route yesterday. This is all the rubbish. We've got porridge, nice. Tea bag, milk bottle, Rubbish. That'll do. Hey? Why? Because you keep bending them. Oh, look, look. The ends are broken up a lot. <laughs> I do like these fucking stoves. This expedition foods um, porridge with blueberries is really good. Yeah. Mmm. Really nice. I've got my cup of tea down there as well. But not a Yorkshire tea bag. Tetley's. What? What? Are you fucking recording? Mmm. <laughs> I think it tastes better in the woods than it does in the house. Good morning, dear. How is that for you? How is that? Lovely. Is it cold? It's like a hot bath. Is it? No, it's lovely. I'm coming. Suppose I'm going to have to do it or I'm just going to get it, you know, upcast for the rest of the day that I didn't go in the pool. So here goes. Here we go. Mm. <clears throat> it's actually alright once you're in. Oh. That was definitely colder than yesterday. <laughs> so we've just got all packed up and um I think it's a great little campground this. Got the uh got the river behind us here. Any obvious? Uh wait, David? What? Uh 
What do you think about last night's campground? All right. I nice. think it was really nice. nice. Dave gets a bit spooked out by the trees, though. The trees start moving. He keeps, he's all night long, he's going, Jay, is that you? Is that you? This was the route yesterday, and apparently we shouldn't have gone past this marker. That's what happened to Larry. All right, so it was a bit of an escapade yesterday, wasn't it, Foxy? An escapade. I know. Bit of a disaster. We end up going up the back door, we get to the top. It's so windy, we end up coming back to where we actually started going up the back door. I mean, it doesn't really get any uh, more dramatic than that, does it? We couldn't have stayed up there though. No, we couldn't have stayed up there in them winds. Bloody hell. We nearly got blew away at the tree line, never mind on top. Whew. But you know, even though we had a gruelling climb up there, the route back down, we found a lovely little spot to camp last night. We had a sort of semi-disturbed night's sleep with all of the wind, but it was uh, it was nice, it was worth it. Lovely little swim, last night and today. And uh, we're buzzing. We are absolutely buzzing now. So it's just a case of now doing the reciprocal route back to the car. Do some footage on the way back as well. Do some what? Footage. <laughs> We've just come to Font Des Pratt just for a little look around. The torrent's all dry here. Um, Foxy's just been in the font there, got himself some water to filter for a cup of tea. Strangely enough, last night as we were heading into that little area where we camped, we passed two people in the pitch black who said, hola. So <laughs> this morning, they were still there just camping on the forest floor on little thin foam mats. Foxy wanted to come to Font Des Pratt just for a little look around, which is only five minutes. Walking along, there's a sleeping bag hanging off a tree and there's another couple just in this little rock ring on two foam mats on the floor. No tents, real hardcore. I thought I'd better update you on the fire pot posh pork and beans that I had night last night. It was really nice, but it's got some repercussions the following day. <laughs> Dave just said the gas should be coloured because it just lingers and then he walks through it. It should come with some sachet that makes the gas green so people can see it. It's just like a cloud that comes out and lingers in the woods. And you walk through and you go, ha! Jesus Christ, what the hell was that? <laughs> Foxy? What? Uh, could I just have uh, could I just have your commentary on the fire pot? Oh, pot no. Jesus. <laughs> Here he goes. Jesus Christ, man! You're <laughs> fucking following me! <laughs> Dude, okay, it, it sinks. <laughs> it's gonna sink along that riverbed. Back here again. I feel like I'm in that movie Deja Vu with Holly Berry. Dave. Could you look like Halle Berry just for a second? <laughs> <laughs> Get rid of that stubble. Mike, what? Here he is. Dave. Yeah? Have you got a list of stuff you would take to hike in heaven? The gear I have. Not a hotel? <laughs> I'd take a camper van. <laughs> that's, that's camper van heaven. It's not a hike in heaven. Is it? Would you would you take your Tug 750 or your 550? 550. I would as well. 
I think Dave and I have agreed that the 550 is the one. And I try and find a, a, a hiking heaven that wouldn't let you in. Why? <laughs> do you know, do you, yeah. Do you know what? I would definitely take the hike in heaven just to, just to keep you happy. I would take at least um, 50 sachets of posh pork and beans. <laughs> I would keep you happy. I, I would also take my rustling tent and my rustling sleeping mat. What are you doing? <laughs> Dave reckons my tent rustled all night and my sleeping mat as well. And you snore. And I snore. So. <laughs> It's a bit of a, a bit of so, a concoction, like. So to mention hiking heavens, a bit of a fucking stretch, isn't it? Because there's nothing heaven about listening to you rustle all night in snow. In snow. Yeah. I actually had nightmares last night because we were walking past those two people who were sleeping in the wood, and then I, something woke me, and I thought I saw like a red head torch light outside the tent but it was only momentarily and then I couldn't decide if it was a dream if it was real and I had to shout across Dave you had your head torch on out there <laughs> but it was obviously just a dream that's what happens when you sleep in the woods so we're just heading back down the trail to the aqueduct uh, where we may have a cup of tea or we may go down through the next bit of forest and put tea down there somewhere. Do you reckon, Dave? Yeah. Which one do you fancy? Either. Either. Oh. Here we've got the view over the Gorge Blow from another angle. It's actually a house down there. How do they get to that house by car? I don't know. We're just debating whether or not this wheelbarrow's got something underneath it, like a body. Nope. No, it's just being tipped up there. Who would leave a brand new wheelbarrow out in the middle of the forest, upside down? It's so bizarre, isn't it? Bizarre. Well, it obviously warrants a photograph. But it obviously gets full to here at the reservoir, because look, these, these stones are covered in mud. So it obviously gets up here. Yes. So it's not at its maximum anywhere near, is it? Little river here running underground. Well, we're just about back to the car. I think it's been an eventful trip, Dave, do you not? No, it has a bit. It definitely has. But if it wasn't for the weather, we would have sat up a little bit later last night and God knows what else, a bit of crack outside the tents, but we didn't because it was so windy and cold but we will uh, return another day and do it again so guys hope you've enjoyed the video don't forget to click the subscribe button and the bell and we'll catch you again later cheers for watching oh and don't forget to buy the fire pot posh pork and beans that that's my comment don't, don't. <laughs> Take care.